I wanted to share with you all an approach that I think will be really useful to kind of learn about and understand with Next.js, and that is kicking off asynchronous tasks, which take a little bit longer to run. Um, you'll encounter this if you're building a, any type of like AI related uh, application or feature. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an issue that you might run into if you don't properly have your code set up for asynchronous jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and select a YouTube video here. I'll click generate chapters. You notice that the, the app just kind of freezes, right? Um, and because of the way the server action is set up under the hood, this new information doesn't come in until it's done processing fully. Now, unfortunately, this is doing a lot of work behind the scenes. This is like getting the transcripts from the YouTube video link I paste in. It's running it through OpenAI. It's trying to take a ton of input tokens, process them, and generate some chapters. So this takes some time under the hood, and this is a good opportunity to do some type of asynchronous processing behind the scenes, right? Um, now, I am trying to use server action, so let's walk you through how this works. When someone submits the form, I'm calling a function uh, right here called generate chapters, right? And this is a callback function, which basically invokes the action here. And then when the action is done, we clear the form, we show a toast, and we also push a pending job, which is how we're doing this asynchronous updates, which I'll show in a second. And then we refresh the user's credits. So the issue is that this whole thing is going to take some time to finish, right? It takes 5, 10 seconds, sometimes 15 seconds to finish generating the chapters. And the reason, if I go to the action, and the reason this is a action that actually takes a lot of steps, it has to create a model, a video model in the database. It updates a user's count in the database. And then it has to do a bunch of other stuff, right? It has to download the transcripts from YouTube, gets the title from YouTube, and then it has to get all the data, map it together. It runs that through OpenAI. And as you can tell, it takes some time. Okay, so a little trick that you can potentially do is I'm going to wrap all of this code here, like all of this processing code. I'm going to go ahead and make a function called run job. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's just going to wrap this entire process here, and I'm going to call it down here at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm taking all of the heavy, the, the long running processes and I'm wrapping it in its own standalone function. And I'm going to explicitly invoke it without putting in a wait in front of here. And what this allows this action to do is it does the simple stuff first, the stuff that doesn't take too long. And then it kind of defers this job code and runs it behind the scenes. And you might say, well, okay, if, if the job fails though, if any of this code fails, how do you update the UI to tell the UI that, hey, like, you know, the video is too long. You can see here I have some like try catch logic here where I update the record to basically store any errors that happen. So unfortunately with this approach, you can't just send back the, the error code in the response. You have to implement some other logic. So doing this, let me show you what this does. Go back to the UI. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a video, paste it in, take another one, paste it in. And notice that we have all of these different widgets that are kind of running um, doing some polling to kind of continuously update and check is my job done. Okay, so that's the main difference is that the, the heavy running code in the action, we just send it off as like its own asynchronous function. And the way next works, it doesn't seem to kill this code. It just lets this code run due to the way that uh, I guess the V8 engine works under the hood and how Node works. Now, if you want to do this properly, you should probably actually set up like a queue. If you want to use like AWS SQS, set up a queue, send off an event, have another process, consume that queue and process on this job. This is a more like hacky approach that happens to work. So I'm just going to try to keep the code base as simple as possible instead of bringing in third party like queue services, grab MQ, active MQ, stuff like that. But so how do I make these widgets update periodically when the job is done? Okay, as you can, as you can tell here, when this stuff finishes, somehow this widget here knows how to pull in the changes and know when it's done. The easiest way you can do it is by using polling, okay? So every three seconds, I'm gonna show you this widget here. If I go to the job card, and I'm also gonna do the page. So on this page, we have a jobs display component. The jobs display component is basically looping over all of those pending jobs that we are pushing into this array as we kick off jobs, right? So we make a request to the API. The API makes us a video ID. It sends back that video ID. We take that video ID, we store it in a pending jobs array. And then we loop over 
those pending jobs here, and I create new job cards for all those job IDs. Okay, now the magic of how this stuff updates over time is inside the job card, I have an effect that just refreshes the job every three seconds. Okay, so every three seconds it just checks. Hey, is this job done? No, okay, then it waits. And then after three seconds, it checks again. Hey, is this job done? And when it finishes, it's gonna clear the interval and it's gonna stop doing um, the refreshing. Now that I think about it, I don't think I actually clear the interval anywhere. I might need to do that. Let me just clear the interval here. So I might just do this real quick. Uh, I'll just say if job.status is equal to done or job.status is equal to failed, then we're gonna go ahead and clear the interval. There we go. I think that's proper. But now behind the scenes, like we'll just have a bunch of intervals that are firing. So I think that might actually clean that up a little bit. But that's kind of how it works. So we make this little job card, it kicks off an interval, it keeps checking, it keeps checking. At some point, the API finishes doing the processing, stores that information in the database, I get that information back. Now you might say, well, Cody, you know, this is why we have WebSockets. You could actually hook into a WebSocket service and you could easily do this with WebSockets. And I would say I could, but I do think that adds more complexity to a system because with Next.js, especially when you're deploying to a serverless runtime, you can't have stateful connections, right? So you can't just qu easily set up a WebSocket server. Um, you have to actually use a third-party service like API Gateway V2 WebSockets. You can use Pusher or something like that. But I just, I'm deferring pulling in all this additional complexity so that it's much easier for me to manage this project by myself. I like to think about software systems as like gear cogs, if this analogy makes sense to anybody. When you start off, your system might look like this, but over time, it starts looking more like this. And when your system becomes like this, it's a lot easier for everything to start falling apart or breaking because a single little service or a gear just breaks. And then you end up spending a lot more time trying to figure out how all these pieces need to fit together. So that's why I'm deferring bringing in WebSockets. I want my system to continuously just look like this, or if possible, what Next.js kind of provides you. Next.js allows your system to just look like this for the most part. You got one running thing, it's deployed one place, that's it. Don't know if you like that analogy. I thought it's a pretty good analogy. But anyway, that's how you can do asynchronous jobs in Next.js. I think it's important to understand this little, I guess it's like a hack where you just wrap your long running code in an asynchronous function, you invoke it, but you don't actually await on it, right? Let that run in the background and then update your database and have your front end kind of refresh. Now I will say if you have a different approach that you would have done, if you wanted to do an asynchronous job like this with Next.js and server actions, leave a comment, let us know. Maybe there's a better way to do this, um, but this is the way I thought it was a pretty good approach. Other than that, yeah, have a good day, happy coding, and be sure to join me Discord if you want a place to kind of hang out and talk to some other developers.